What is going on, everybody? I am back. I am going to go over another book. Um, this is more of a guide. Um, it's the Powder Coating um, Institute's Powder Coating the Finisher's Handbook, 4th edition. This thing is massive. Um, it's a good reading material if you want to put yourself to sleep. Um, basically, I think you can buy the book online if you go to their Powder Coating Institute website. Um, but I took the class about two years ago, and they just give you the book, um, which is super nice of them, I guess. Um, along with Powder Coating 101 workbook. So um, in two days, we basically went over this whole fat book, too. But um, the book's kind of handy if you're a custom powder coater because... Um, or a batch powder coater or any kind of powder coater. Um, it goes over a ton of information. Basically, anytime you have any problems, you can go back to the book, um, look it up and see what's going on. Um, it goes over why people choose powder coating, um, econo economical advantages, environmental advantages, um, different powder coating materials, um, thermoset powders, you know, UV curing powders, special effect powder coating, which is um, a whole different ball game. If you looked at our uh, Illusion Blue, that's kind of one of those um, special effect powders that are super hard to spray and can be a pain in your butt. Um, hanger design, production analysis, so if you're getting into bulk parts and that you're going to run them over and over again, um, different considerations as far as whether you should be doing a batch system or um, conveyor system. Um, and then it goes into surface preparation, removing mill scale, um, laser scale, cleaning, rinsing, pre-treatment, phosphating, chrome conversion coat. I mean, it's all in there. Um, surface preparation methods, um, spray wand, which is what we use for our um, phosphate coating because we're not very big. We don't want to have a big dip tank. Um, different drying methods, um, different powder applications, talking about like corona charging, um, back ionization, spray pattern controls, and all this stuff, robotics, um, and that gets into the powder coating booths, different systems, um, color changing, um, thoughts on, you know, the time and effort it takes for an automated system, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, recovery, if you're a, a large organization, and you spray a ton of black, you're gonna to wanna to recover some of that, reuse it. Um, it talks about you know, the different mixtures of how much you want to use of the reclaimed with the new as you mix it in, because it does break it down and takes away from the charge it will hold. Um, I mean, it talks about air systems, design considerations when you're setting up your powder coating facility, health and safety, environmental, regulatory topics, quality testing, training, um, repair or rejects from parts. Um, some shops have specific written um, standard protocol as far as what they'll reject and what they won't. Um, and then they talk about case studies where they price out doing the same parts and stuff. So it's kind of a cool book. I won't go on and on with it anymore, but um, if you're going to take the class, it's definitely a perk of taking the class. Um, me as a batch coder, they didn't talk a lot in class about the stuff that pertains to me, but as far as what I got out of it was quite a bit. I mean, with the material, the books, the workbook, with the slides, um, talking to the industry professionals that were there, um, it was well worth it. So. Uh, if you're really getting serious, that's something you may want to look into. I'm also thinking about taking, I think it's powder by the pound class, uh, which is more hands-on. I think in, in the Powder Coating Institute class, the 101, we got to spray one part, which doesn't really, they didn't really go over a lot with it, but a lot of mill thickness talk, which is good, I guess. But um, I think a little more hands-on would be interesting. So if I end up doing that, I will definitely be posting videos um, about each day in class and all that sort of thing so as always make sure to subscribe and hopefully soon we'll have some videos up about hot flocking it's a big 
big sore subject with some people and then other people like me we we do it all the time so we're gonna do some of that and then another can you coat it i think we're gonna do a wood door Ugh. so uh you won't want to miss that that'll be interesting so we will catch you on the next one thank you